Not a surprise here against Besiktas. The only surprising thing was Faker probably giving up first blood in this match when four people arrived in his mid lane. Outside of that, though, Marin, Faker, the whole crew showed up this match. I, if Faker's God, that just makes him stronger, right? When you kill him, he just gets stronger. And that is exactly what happened. Coming out strong, the Azir play, he still had 231 to 147 CS and did not fall behind CS when he was dead in his lane. So the thing is, it felt like Besiktas had this idea of lane swap and roaming ganks that in theory wasn't bad. The problem is they lost so much at the cost of those decisions. They gave up yep. a lot of CS, a lot of experience and a lot of gold to their opponents and SKT just played the mid game very well. A little over eager in the laning phase, but I think they were having some fun with that game and just sort of outclassing Besiktas in this matchup. Marin on Rumble, just relieving so much pressure on the map for SKT, being in that top lane. Always pushing out Narius, always pushing out Thaldrin. Just Rumble, Equalizer, he didn't care. As soon as they walked in front of him, he threw it on him and then won the lane again. Yeah, and SKT always punishing Besiktas for any positional move they make, even if it's to commit for a kill. Yeah. They would then use that time to push a lane, get experience where they need to, place wards, and then that always set up the next big play for SKT. Yeah, and the one thing you also have to keep highlighting is Bengi and Wolf for the first 15 minutes consistently in Besiktas' jungle, almost disrespecting the ability to counterplay. But when you've got that Rex site, when you've got the Lantern, there's a lot of tools to escape. And they were used multiple times and weren't punished for that, which is something that maybe other teams can look to do if SKT make those same decisions later in the day. We'll definitely keep an eye on if Besiktas as well begins to hone their skills as other international wildcard teams have at these international events. Now, as we finish up that game, we're going to get more insight on SKT's win. We're going to hand it off to our analyst desk. Thank you, Riv. And before we get into any analysis, we actually have our first MSI big play for you straight from this last game. And it comes from at Montress Omen, who says, wait, what? Three minutes first blood on Faker? Here it is. Looks like Thakalese and Thaldrin just on the other side, and it's going to be as well. Dumbledore's from the top lane. The hits go in. Oh, 10 points to Dumbledore's first blood. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, they're definitely having fun with it, though. That's the thing I love about Besiktas here is because they're coming in with the right mentality. You can see four people mid lane. They don't care. They want to kill Faker. They're joking about having a rune page with 15% reduced time on death. Like, they are here for the right reason. Like, they are a top team in the international wild card, and they're coming in with the right mentality that they're going to learn while they're here and test their style. Absolutely. Now, remember to keep calling out those jaw-dropping moments from the action all week long by tweeting them to at Sports, and be sure to use that hashtag. Uh, MSI big plays as well as MSI 2015. Now turning to the actual match at hand, I want to jump off of what Zyrene said here, which is that Besiktas is coming in with the correct mentality here. They're looking to make early aggressive plays, but have fun while doing it and really stretch themselves as a team. Yeah, I personally had a lot of fun watching this game and the first five, six, seven minutes where they traded one for one and were two one up. That was really fun to watch. And it was awesome. then, of course, SKT slowly coming back, what we kind of expected. But yeah, absolutely enjoyed watching this game. And I think going forward, this is something, you know, I'm looking forward to see BJK face off against the other team. Personally, I'm, not, I'm looking forward more to SKT. And <laughs> the thing that's really <laughs> impressive for this one was there is obviously a mismatch of teams. But at 18 minutes, SKT get the 10k gold lead i mean you don't do that on a regular basis versus anybody like that's such an impressive way of gathering gold like they have cs leads across the board they've denied experience in every right place they're getting solo kills they're playing aggressively they're using the teleport efficiently and that's something that these other teams have to look out for when they face skt because the second you slip up we know how relentless the Asian teams are at punishing one mistake. EDG does it as well. You slip up once, you're done. Yeah, I definitely agree. Coming into this, I think it shows us a lot about both teams. It shows that Besiktas, they're not going to be scared to pull the trigger on any play because they're here for the right reasons. They want to learn. They want to test how far they can push themselves. And I think that teams will watch how SKT played against them and take a lot away because any other team, you can kind of get into the brawly, yeah, where maybe a little bit me better mechanically will team fight you, will turn it into your kind of the game. And that's where the game deteriorates and maybe they sneak a win. Whereas SKT, they didn't do any of that. They stuck in their lanes. They farmed up. I actually think the Rumble pick was really uh, interesting. I thought that they would have taken it first 
pick, the Aldrin plays a really good rumble in the top lane. And because we kind of know... Even before this, when we look at their teams, Besiktas is a team that falls behind early game. They did it against INTZ. They even did it against uh, Bangkok Titans when they played them in the semis of the International Wildcard Invitational. Get something that performs a little bit better mid-game if you can't get that heck room. Yeah, when I was watching SKT, I was saying, wow, this is kind of what I saw before. Faker was playing Vladimir in one game and he got four-man ganked mid lane and gave away first blood. I think this is maybe something teams can actually tackle on with their early aggression and looking for early kills. Yeah, but while people are like busy camping Faker Faker, trying to make him an assault maker, <laughs> salt shaker, there you go, <laughs> Faker Faker salt shaker, um, they, they're getting other things on the map. Marin's getting a CS advantage top, and that ends up being huge for them because he starts dominating that lane. Every time they threw the AD carry up there, it's like, oh god, push him out of lane. And then it's like, all right, tag team, here comes the top laner. It's like, nope, he gets pushed out of lane. And then Marin just started running away with the game there, and he was able to buy Death Cap on the Rumble. Yeah, Very and a lot of what they do is like, they don't hit back with the big kills and things, but you see, as soon as they go up to the top lane straight away, two people are into the bottom side of the jungle. They ward up everything. All of a sudden, you have one less option in the map. You have to clear out the whole side of your jungle before you can go anywhere. So I honestly think that this was a very good technical game from SKT, if nothing else. They controlled the entirety of the map. Maybe not the champions, but you saw that eventually that stranglehold did take place and then they were just able to sweep it out. Yeah, and I feel like this is exactly what we expected from Korea or SKT. Um, they have this really standard play and they see that they get to the kill first blood mid lane <laughs> with four people and they're just like, okay, this is happening. They play their game, they slowly get vision control and they punish every mistake and then boom, 18 minutes, 10K ahead. You know, what are you expecting? Going into the future, I think that the teams have to stay away from what Besiktas did versus SKT because they were having fun. You know, they just want to kill Faker. They can say they did it. He's a pillar in mid lane. Even if he dies many times over, he's still going to be able to be super useful for his team. He's shown it on Sandra, he's shown it on Vladimir, he did it right here, didn't get camped that much, but still was able to get almost a one-shot kill towards the end of the game. Granted, it was a huge gold lead. I think they should be putting a little bit more focus into the top side of the map on Marin. He's shown that when he gets camped, he can struggle to make it back into the game, and he is a little bit aggressive and can be camped out rather easily. So for the future teams playing against SKT, I'd like to see them not so much take away take what Besiktas did, but look at how SKT plays in the previous game. I still feel like on the flip side, Energy was at one point one we wanting uh, Faker and was kind of indecisive. And I think if he was more decisive, he could have snowballed his lead way better. Um, Let's explore this a little bit, though, the idea of what teams can do against SKT using this game for a little bit of knowledge. Because uh, interestingly enough, as you mentioned, 18 minutes, they have a 10K gold lead. They are the highest average gold lead at 20 minutes coming into this tournament at 2,600. So it's pretty significant how they build these gold leads. And as you mentioned, without you kind of realizing it, uh, you know, they're giving up some kills, but all of a sudden they're coming out ahead in gold. So, you know, Marin being one of those possible carry top laners, he did get an astronomical amount of CS in a 2v1. I think if we find teams that are more successful in 2v1s are able to keep Marin down, that might be the window in to beating SKT. I yeah. mean, it's because it's a game of push and pull. You can't put all your resources in one place. They put all the resources into mid lane. Immediately, SKT is not thinking, oh, wow, Faker's behind. How are we going to ever do this? It's like, well, no, they're weak in the other areas now. Let's punish the lane swap. Let's get an advantage while they focused on one side of the map. And they did that. They put Faker behind, but they didn't intentionally put Rumble so far ahead. And that's what SKT can do to you. They really need to be careful with the resource management in getting a lead, the teams that play versus SKT. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree with you. And I think that one thing that you can take away from that is what do you get off killing someone? So in that situation, if Besiktas then roam into the top side of the jungle and push Marin off that turret by completely taking over the top side of the map, then yeah, you say that's a definitely good move because all of a sudden you've gone to your 2v1. But if you just kill someone recall, then you're not going to get that much off it. So I definitely think we agree on that point. Camping out Marin is an interesting one. I think that they will put him in 2v1s and teams will play the 2v1 a little bit differently. So Marin will be forced into a jungle follow. I think that the way that you really do beat SKT is with a little bit deeper wards and try and catch out Bangi and Wolf. I think that they're two of the more aggressive players and I think especially with the control style of some of the junglers that they are two players that are susceptible of just going on random walkabouts Wolf especially and he can be caught yeah, yeah. and something I want to bring up you like you were talking about this game and its implications sort of how to beat SKT 
When SKT throw an easy hoon, it's a completely different team. The dynamic changes, the dynamic shifts, and where they're allocating their jungler is completely different too. Bang gets a little bit more of their gold, a little bit more of their carry potential. So this game, if you're just focusing on this one, it's not actually going to tell you a whole lot about SKT's play style as a whole. Like, it's really difficult to play against them because they're the only team that's really flexing a sub efficiently and using it appropriately. And it's absolutely terrifying to prepare against. Honestly, when I watched this game, I was like really looking forward for EDG versus SKT because what happened after they fell behind, SKT was together with the support and jungle invading the enemy jungle. And this mm. is something we, we've heard before. EDG is really good at. And if maybe in the early game they have a gold discrepancy, I see that actually EDG can come out ahead and pull forward from there. Yeah, it will be interesting to watch other early aggressive teams punish SKT maybe a little bit more in those early ganks. We'll keep it tuned right here because when we come back, we'll check in with the conversation taking place on Twitter. Then it's back into the action with Game 3 featuring China's Edward Gaming versus the LMS's AHQ Esports Club. Stay with us. Zakalis and Thaldrin just on the other side, and it's going to be as well. Dumbledore's from the top lane. We have the monster of the mid lane now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm the monster now. Bingy's looking for the knockup. He finds Ooh. it. He's going to get the Wrath down. They turn to Theocles, and that's two more kills for SKT. They dove right into Theocles, and now they're going to serve him up. Bangi over the wall. Marin piercing the heavens with that equalizer. The Empress Divide already used, but there's the equalizer, oh. and it destroys Besiktas. And SKT will take game two over Besiktas at the Midseason Invitational.